Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Nikki Uncut. I have a full amount of products from Jane Iredell that I wanna test out for this video. And it's gonna be a pretty um, first impression type video because I have not tried or used any of these products at least in a really long time. The only product I'm gonna be really honest with you about that I'm familiar with, but again, I have not used this product in at least 10 years. <laughs> like literally 10 years, if not longer, is the Jane Iredell powder. So this is a pure pressed, it's called the pure pressed base. It's a mineral foundation. It comes as a refill. And then they were also nice enough to give me like the empty um, palette to put it in. And you can actually just refill this as you use it, which is really nice. And um, obviously like very uh, like good for the environment because you're just refilling the same compact. But so this is the only product that I have really truthfully been familiar with from Jane Iredell. That along with the, uh, what is this called? Um, Pomist? Hydrace, hydration spray. It's the, um, it's like a setting spray basically. So you're supposed to use this in conjunction with this to give it more of like a skin-like finish. Or at least that's what I remember from using this way, way, way back in the day. But um, let's move on from that conversation. I'll tell you a little bit of the backstory behind this powder as we get into this video. But I have so many other good stuff from Jane Iredell. And just to give you some context to Jane Iredell uh, reached out and wanted to send me a whole bunch of products to test out. I've been seeing all these products for months <laughs> and I've just gone around to actually playing with them and opening them. So let me just give you like a rundown of what I received from the brand in PR. And um, this video is not sponsored. It's it's me sitting down and actually trying these products out for the first time with you during an uncut. So none of it's gonna be cut out, even my mistakes. <laughs> um, so this is the Smooth Affair Brightening Face Primer. They also sent me a mattifying Smooth Affair Primer. So they have two different primers, one's more for oily skin. One's gonna be more for like a brightening. And I think I want, might wanna try the brightening one out just to try something a little out of my comfort zone. This whole look is probably gonna be a little bit more out of my comfort zone just to be fully honest with you because again, I only know about that pressed mineral foundation from Jane Iredell. So this is a lot of new stuff for me all in one video. But we're gonna create a soft, more spring type makeup look hopefully with the products I have below me. So I'm actually gonna start out with the brightening primer and then I'll just start to show you the products as I get into the video. That way it's not too uh, too drawn out. My Nikki cuts could be a little long, so we'll try to make this a little bit more, um, just, just quick, you know? We'll get into the products a little bit quicker than I sometimes do. So this is the brightening primer called Smooth Affair. So Smooth Affair Brightening face primer. And if you know me, you know I'm not like the biggest primer person, but I'll always test them. I'll always try them out. So brightening and blurring, it's saying it's a hydrating primer that helps to maintain skin's youthful appearance by minimizing the appearance of pores and fine lines. Okay. Let me do a little bit more on my forehead. It feels nice. It doesn't feel heavy. It does have like a little bit of a silicone silky feeling to it, which is uh, basically what is gonna give you that smooth pore refinement, fine line refinement and things like that. So that is the primer on. I'm not gonna put it all over my face because I just don't like the feeling of primers spread throughout my entire face. I like it more pinpointed in the T-zone of my, of my face, personally. So they also sent me, this is really interesting. I wanna try this out because I'm not, seen this product from Jane Iredell. It's supposed to be like a newer product unless I'm really not remembering their full collection because it's been a while, like I said. But this is the Jane Iredell Hydro Pure Tinted Serum. This has hyaluronic acid and CoQ10. Um, what else is about it? What else is this? Dude, I probably shouldn't have thrown away all the packaging, but I was trying to save us time on camera opening each package and it might, might not have been the best idea in hindsight. So they sent me the shade four um, medium. So I'm gonna pump it out in my hand. Okay, so it, as you can probably see, it's like a clear gel with tinted balls of like burst of foundation in there or tinted, um, maybe not foundation, but like burst of color and pigment is in there, I should say. I'm gonna grab my N17 because this is my preferred method for tinted serums, foundation, anything like that. 
Okay, I'm wanting a little more coverage in this. I feel like I don't, I'm not getting any color. Okay, maybe I just need to like work my way up to some different pumps. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay, here we go. Feels very serum-like, very, very hydrating. I don't think this is like the probably the, the best for my skin type, my combination oily, but I can tell you it definitely feels very nice. So I'm going to actually use this in conjunction with the mineral um, pressed powder. Pure pressed. I've got to get this name in my head. Pure pressed mineral foundation. That is what it's called. And by the way, this also has SPF 20 in it. I'm, I don't think that this has any SPF in it. No, it doesn't. Okay. So this does not have SPF in it, which is totally fine. I already have my SPF underneath. Um, and currently right now I have on the Horror Horror Wonder SPF 50. Comes in like a yellow tube. I talk about it a lot. It's one of my favorites. And one of my go-tos, especially for under makeup, because it just wears really nice under makeup. All right, so I feel like this gave a little bit, like a very, very, very little bit of coverage. I'm wondering if it's more, hmm, like if it's going to adjust to my skin, if it's like a color adjusting product, but I'm guessing it's not. Either way, it feels nice. This is a first impressions video, so you know I I might not be using the products to the best of their ability, just because this is a first impression video. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt because I do need to work with these products a bit more. Um, we're gonna move into concealer, and they sent me three concealers. These I'm guessing are gonna be a bit too dark for me. They sent nine W, eight N, and seven W. And I'm even though I don't like a W under my eye, I want to just do a couple swipes for coverage before I go in with that pressed mineral powder. So let's do a couple, couple dabs. And actually, let's see what this 8N looks like because it's gonna be more of a neutral shade. And this one is reading really yellow on me. Okay, that's yellow too. Let's go back to the 7. So 7W. Let's pop this under the eyes. Formula feels nice so far. Again, just as a first impression. My skin does feel nice too after that. Hydro Pure Tinted Serum. It feels really nice actually. It feels very, very hydrated and um, it's left me up with like a nice glow. Let's move on to, I'm gonna blend this out with my N14 brush. And let's see what this does. I do have my eyebrows on because there is no, or at least I don't know if they have eyebrow products. They didn't send me eyebrow products, so I don't have them to test out for this video. Um, I also, they did not send a, they did not send, excuse me, a mascara, but they didn't send, they did. I cannot talk today. <laughs> I am so sorry. This video is going to be a wreck with my with uh, me jumbling my words, but they did send me three really pretty lipsticks that I'm excited for. They also did not send me eyeshadows. So for the eyeshadows, I have a really pretty palette that I have been wanting to use in a YouTube video, and I just haven't found a way to put it in yet, but I will show you in just a second. I'm excited. It's not from Jane Iredell, but it is from uh, a female-owned brand, um, Dominique Cosmetics. And the palette, let me just show you really quick because I it's so stunning. We're going to be using this palette to create like a soft spring eye makeup look to go with this Jane Iredell pretty much full face of makeup. So it's the Dominique Cosmetics The Essential Palette and it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So let's get this on. Let's test out some more. I have to say the concealer feels really nice and especially in areas where I have larger pores right here, it's looking nice and smooth. So, you know, color aside, it's not the best shade for me, unfortunately, but, you know, I appreciate them saying them different shades anyway, just to test out. I'll have to pick up more of a neutral undertone concealer for my, my under eyes. I do feel like this formula looks really nice, though. 
It's definitely giving really beautiful coverage. It's incredibly easy to blend out. And it does look really smooth. Like my under eyes look really smooth. Okay. Hmm. I like that. I really like that. Okay. That's pretty, really, really pretty. And again, first impressions, you know, I'll definitely need more time to play with all the stuff from Jane Iredell that I'm trying today. So just kind of keep that all in mind. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I kind of feel like I don't really need actual foundation, but we're definitely going to put that powder on. And I'm excited to try that powder again. It's been, again, like I said, at least a decade since I've used that powder. And I remember liking it, but I bought it back in the day for such a specific reason. I never bought it for myself. And um, yeah, I'm excited to try it again. So they did send a beautiful bronzer. I love a good cream bronzer. I'm all about a cream bronzer. And I like these kind of stick twist up components. They're really easy to travel with and they're just easy, user-friendly, all those things. Um, the shade that they sent me is Scorch. So what I wanna do, I wanna pre-blend this on my hand and see just kind of like the texture, get a feel for like the, how opaque it is, how it blends out. Let's do this. Let's do what I would normally do. I'm gonna grab my N15 brush. I'm gonna pick up some of this cream bronzer and we're gonna just see how this blends into my skin. Okay, it's pretty. All right, I feel like I got like a feel for the formula. So now I'm gonna take brush directly onto the product. Now that I trust it a little bit more, it's always just kind of good to test out and get a feel for the product before you actually put it on your skin and have to do damage control if it doesn't blend out. Okay, it's blending out nice. Color is good. Color definitely, or the shade really works for me. Has a nice, has a nice neutral undertone too, which I really appreciate because it's not looking super orange on my skin tone. I have more of a warm olive undertone and sometimes bronzers can look just straight up orange on me. So this looks really nice. And uh, yeah, it's looking really pretty on the monitor. It's looking really neutral. Oh, got an itch. So I'm gonna build this up, get some nice warmth onto my skin. I keep thinking that my forehead's patchy when I don't have a lot of coverage on, but I'm realizing it's just my veins that I'm seeing through my, through my skin. I'm seeing my veins through my skin on my forehead. And I keep thinking, I've been doing this for weeks and weeks. I'm like, why is this patchy here? And it's not, when I look closely, it's just my veins <laughs> popping through. Oh, so that's always fun. Okay, trying to hold down all these baby hairs on my forehead. This is why I always pin my hair back or clip it back when I'm doing a makeup tutorial because my baby hairs just wanna go crazy. Okay, I'm gonna warm up my nose. And let's just get this on. I'm gonna actually get this on how I normally would if I wasn't filming, which is quick. <laughs> that way we're not here all day blending on some bronzer. Going for a little bit more of a sun-kissed effect with like my blending and my placement of this bronzer. But yep, there's those veins. Right in there. Okay, let's get this cheek done on this side. Okay, very pretty very pretty and I'm feeling more like myself. Complexion is looking and feeling nice. Let's run a little bit under my chin. Kind of like whatever's left over, I'm gonna run down under my jawline. 
just for a very soft sculpted effect. And also I really, this looks like the perfect shade that I would use to do this. So I'm gonna take it, apply it underneath my bottom lip, tuck it right in between my cupid's bow. I'm going to grab my N16 brush. I'm gonna start by tapping that in and then lightly blending it out. Just gonna bring my lips out a bit more, which I really personally am all about. Especially for me, like my lip line gets very lost in the shuffle of my the rest of my skin tone. I don't really have like a visible lip line. It's the strangest thing. But the rest of my lips are really pigmented. Like if you, like my lips are just really red, naturally. Very, very pigmented, very red. And, uh, but my lip line is just gone. <laughs> it's just not really there. So I'm gonna go back to a bit more of the W7 concealer, 7W I should say, concealer. I want a little bit more into my eyes just for my personal comfort. I'm getting more and more used to the shade. It's not looking as yellow as it once did when I initially put it on. You know, initially when I put on concealer, it's on a bare face. You know, I talk about this a lot. My face is just so much lighter than the rest of my body and it could play tricks on me <laughs> and, and it does, it really does. So when I put a more warm tone concealer on my bare skin, it just ends up looking so yellow in comparison. Even if it's really not that yellow, it just ends up looking so yellow in comparison. So going back to my N16, I'm gonna tap this in under my eyes. I really am loving the way this concealer is looking though. There's no setting powder on it. It's been very lightly blended and it blended into my skin with just very little effort. So very easy to work with. And I'm not experiencing a whole lot of creasing. Granted, I don't have a lot under my eyes at the moment. I'm kind of just slowly building it up. And also I'm really curious to see how this powder is gonna work on top and how I can put some blush on top of that as well and how it's going to just kind of work with each other. So this is gonna be interesting. Also, please excuse my allergies. I have had some springtime allergies that are just getting me. I'm gonna bring this down a bit. Okay. I have to say, again, my skin feels really nice right now. I do think a lot of these products are probably geared a bit more towards dry skin than oily skin. Just kind of throwing that out there. So, what should we do? We should dip into this powder. <laughs> Let's dip into this powder. Let's see what it does. And they sent me two shades. They sent me the shade Suntan, which is this one. And which one is this one? And Golden Glow. This one has more of a, a cool tone to it. Like it's visibly a little bit more pink. I actually might end up mixing these two to be quite honest, but I wanna start out first, at least with Golden Glow. Cause it's gonna be, this looks like it's gonna be more of my shade, but I always love a good neutral mix into my foundations, to, like typically speaking. So we might end up mixing the both of them. So let me grab, and for this, I'm actually gonna use my N15 brush. This is my powder brush. So no surprise, I'm gonna be using this for the powder from Jane Aradell. So this is a powder foundation. Oops. So it's gonna give you actual coverage. It's a little old school in that sense where, you know, it's it kind of reminds me a bit of like MAC Studio Fix powder, where it's like a pa actual powder foundation that will give you coverage. It reminds me of that, but it's obviously more of like a natural formula. It's Jane Aradell. Jane Aradell is like a very natural makeup brand as far as like their ingredients and their formulations go. Um, that's kind of like their point of view with makeup. So definitely gonna be different from MAC, but um, it's gonna give coverage. So the funny story about this powder is the reason why I ever tried it is because I had a job, again, over 10 years ago, like probably like really realistically 12 years ago, I got a job as a makeup artist on a YouTube show, like an actual scripted show that was just gonna be aired on YouTube. It was called love something. I'd have to look it up. 
Um, it was like a dating type show. Like that was like the premise of the show. Really cute show. I loved the team that I worked with. I loved the whole cast. I, I became friends with a lot of them. Um, but yeah, it was an actual YouTube show. And back when I was hired for it, I was like, I have never heard of this. Like I didn't know the YouTube had actual like sitcoms, like an actual sitcom you would watch. I thought it was just like tutorials and like how-to videos and things like that. So it was really new to me back then. I learned a lot. I worked on the show, uh, I think for probably for like two years total. Um, I also, I don't remember if I got paid or not. I want to say I did this whole show for free. I'm pr actually I'm pretty sure I got, I was not paid for the show, <laughs> but it was either way. It was a really good learning experience. It was a long time ago. So like back then I, I pretty much never said no to anything. And I think that's a key to a lot of success. Like if you're just starting out as a makeup artist, not to go on a whole separate rant about this, but I, um, I really believe that like a lot of like my success was because I didn't say no to any jobs, whether I want to do them or not. And I, to be fully honest, did not want to do this show. And, um, but I'm glad that I did. Cause it's always, it's always a learning experience and there's always some kind of takeaway from it. And, uh, I do remember meeting other people that got me on other jobs after that. So it was always, it was definitely worth it. I think I even have like an IMDB with this show. I have to look up the name. Maybe I'll have, maybe I'll tag it if it's still on YouTube. Anyway, so the reason why I got this powder was because one of the girls that was on, that was in the cast had extremely sensitive acne prone skin. And she was like, please find me something other than Mac, other than any of these heavier products to use as my foundation, because anything you put on me, that's like a traditional makeup product, like liquid foundation is going to break me out. And so I went on a journey that of discovery and learning. And, um, I'm happy that I did. It was like such a curveball that she threw me. And I remember being so in my head about it and, and like stressing out so much about, oh my God, what am I going to put on this girl's skin? I don't want to break her out. I was really worried about it. And long story short, okay, this is a very long story, but I'll try to condense that. <laughs> I went to Namie's and if you don't know, if you're not in LA, if you're not from LA, Namie's is like a professional beauty store where professional people in the, in the industry, like makeup artists, ha hairstylists, even models and actors can go, they can get a pro discount on a ton of makeup products. So a ton of makeup brands. So Jane Iredell was, had one, one of the counters in this store called Namie's and I went to Namie's and I had buddies there. I had so many buddies there and I went to like one of the people that would normally help me. And I was like, listen, I don't know. I have this person. They have really sensitive acne pro skin. I don't know what to put on them. That's not going to like, you know, cause a breakout and this and that. And they're like, I got you. This is what you need. So they took me to Jane Iredell, like the counter and, um, or the display, whatever you call it. And they're like, you're going to get her this foundation. Actually, let me switch my brush. That's a little too wet. <laughs> They're like, you're going to get her this foundation and you're going to set it and lock it in with this spray and it's going to last all day and all this stuff. And man, they just, they sold me. They sold me on this Jane Iredell pressed powder foundation and I used it on her. And I remember thinking too, gosh, this is so expensive because I wasn't getting paid. Like I said, right. Or at least I don't remember being paid much <laughs> if I was. And um, it was all coming out of my pocket. So I was buying her like a full on, like customized um, kit basically to use on her on during like these shoots. And so I bought her the Jane Iredell powder with the spray. And I think I bought a concealer as well. I think I bought also a blush to go with. Pretty sure I bought like a whole like custom little kit for her that I was gonna use on her only of course. And it worked amazing. It looked beautiful on camera from what I remember. It never broke her out. She loved it. I'm pretty sure she probably uses it to this day. And um, to this day also, when I think of Jane Iredell, I think of that girl that I shopped for for this show. And it's just a, it's a fond memory because it was like such an overall learning experience. But that is my story. <laughs> Sorry to go on a total side track um, rant, but I just, I do have fond memories of this brand for that reason. And I learned a lot, so. I learned that they're a great company to recommend or a great brand to recommend if you have acne prone, super sensitive skin. So that's my story. And um, as I was chatting away, I got to say this, this powder foundation looks really pretty. It looks really, really pretty. And then my other story that I have, <laughs> that I have an association with uh, this Jane Iredell pressed powder foundation is Lisa J, my friend, Lisa J who, hello, that I, you know, made these brushes with her brand BK Beauty and 
it's been like the highlight of my life because it's like an incredible opportunity and experience. But yes, my friend Lisa J, I always think of her when I think of this powder because she uses it all the time. And every time she uses it in a video, I, I literally sit there and I'm like, Lisa, like, I have to try this. Like, I have to go get this because she makes it look so beautiful. And at first, I'm gonna be honest with you, since I hadn't used it in so long, I thought, well, I know Lisa has beautiful skin. I've seen it, I've worked on it. I've done makeup on her multiple times and she has flawless skin. Like, there's not one thing out of, out of, uh, out of sorts with her skin. Like, there's nothing, there's no, like, flaws, right? So I thought, well, it's just her skin and that's why it looks so good. But I have to say, I, I don't think that anymore. I think this is just really a great product and um, I'm happy I'm using it again. Really happy. Okay, so also, in case you're wondering, I am going back in with the cream bronzer in Scorch and I picked up a clean N17 because this one just had a little too much of um, that super wet hydro pure tinted serum on it. So it's way too wet to combine. It was gonna break down that powder but I'm layering a bit more of this um, cream bronzer on top of the powder foundation. And in case you're wondering, it is working fantastic. So we're learning a lot today with, <laughs> with Jane Iredell and what works with what and how to layer these products together and how they play well together. We're learning a lot together and it's, it's been fun. I'm having, I'm having a great time. I don't know why it took me so long to break into these products. I feel really bad about it. I just had, I feel like I've had zero time to play and Life's just been crazy. Life has been really crazy. So let's go back to a couple of things. I need to fine tune a couple of things. So I'm gonna grab my N16. And this is honestly one of my, between this and my N14, these are like my fine tuning brushes, like my magic wands. And the reason why I call them fine tuning is because they're small, they're more precise. They have angles and um, like pointed uh, tapered tips to them is the word I was looking for which makes it great for like buffing out creases and fine tuning any small areas of the face that are just hard to get into. So I buffed out creases, had just a few minor ones, probably just from laughing so much during this video and like smiling. Now they don't have an actual like setting powder. They just have the powder mineral foundation. I'm not gonna put the powder mineral foundation under my eyes, I just know better. So instead, Speaking of Lisa J, she also was using this Fenty loose powder in a recent video and it jogged my memory and it made me realize that I haven't used this powder in a long time and I wanna just not waste it. And I, I don't like to be wasteful, um, obviously who does? So I'm bringing this back out. I haven't used this in a while and it's all because of Lisa J and she inspired me to bring it back out because she was talking about how much she loves it. And I thought, huh, what were my thoughts on this powder? Like, I don't really remember. So. Anyway, we're gonna use it today, because why not? And I don't have a Jane Iredell one to use for under my eyes. So I'm taking my N14. I'm gonna dip into the shade Butter. It's O2 Butter, it's the shade. This powder is a bit light um, as far as like the tone. So it is gonna help to brighten my under eyes, which will be good because the concealer is not that bright in tone. So this will help to kind of balance that out a bit. So I'm using a small amount. I'm not gonna go too heavy with the powder. But that looks good, look at that. Nice, smooth. Just do a little bit going up towards my temple. Get like a nice little half moon. I don't know why I felt like I had to lean into that, but a little half moon lift up under my eyes. Oh, okay. I don't know why I have a case of the sillies right now. Um, gonna lock this side in. Get some nice refinement and some nice smoothness. Now listen, if you have really dry under eyes, remember to take certain things that I do, that you see me do for my skin type with a grain of salt. And here's why I say that. Because my under eyes are not necessarily dry. I do have a lot of fine lines. I do have a lot. If you saw me face to face and you were like, right here talking to me, you'd see that I have a lot of fine lines under my eyes. Now that doesn't bother me if I, if I powder them and it just kind of, it can, sometimes it could bring them out a little bit more. The reason why I bring this up is because I choose to still powder them because I would rather have longevity under my eyes and have them look a wee bit on the dry side than the opposite, than not to have them set 
and to have my concealer moving around throughout the day. So if you do have really, really dry under eyes, I would use half the amount, if not maybe a quarter of the amount of powder that you're seeing me use under my eyes right now. So just, I wanna start kind of throwing out those little warnings because I think they're really helpful. So, because we all have different skin types and what works for me is not always gonna work for you. So just kind of customize it if you're following along at home. Okay, that powder is great. It is beautiful. Now, before I go in and set my makeup, the powder makeup, I wanna actually do some blush. They sent me a beautiful blush, same stick kind of component, which I love. The shade in this is balmy, cute. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna warm it up on the top of my hand. This just helps me to break down that top cold layer of product and really like break through it. So I have like a nice, beautiful, easy application. I'm gonna grab that um, N17 that I used for the bronzer a bit earlier dip into the blush. This is like my kind of shade. It's like the perfect blush color, um, especially for like my skin tone. I'm gonna tap this on. Ooh, that's pretty. Yep. They sent me a really like perfect Nikki shade. Like this is the kind of shade that I would, if I was buying these products, I would totally have bought this. And I would have bought that bronzer shade too, cause it's really, really beautiful. I mean, it just suits my skin tone so well. So tapping it on, still being very careful not to disrupt the powder mineral foundation that's underneath and then now the Fenty powder that's on top and all those things. Now, now that I trust the formula a bit more, I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. I'm gonna tap now brush into product and let's do a little extra, or I should say deposit a little bit more at once this time. Build it up. Hmm, really pretty. I'm getting a little close. Sometimes I have to get really close to see what's really happening. So if I ever did your makeup, I'd be like this close to your face. <laughs> Usually with glasses on, because it just helps me to really see what's happening. So there's a bit of separation right here. Just a bit, it's nothing. Nothing too horrible. So I'm gonna take my N14, go back to Golden Glow. Keep forgetting the name. Here, let me dip into a bit of suntan as well. And I just want to smooth out this little area where we have some separation going. Hmm. Okay, might have been a little bit of user error here. Kind of went a little too far up. Let's see if we can kind of fix this little patchiness going on. not, I don't even think the camera's gonna pick that up, but I got a little bit of patchiness right here. It's not going on as smooth as it did on this side, but it's not the end of the world. Again, kind of still familiarizing myself with these products. I think I got a little cocky and that is my fault. So it's okay. What we're gonna do is grab a bit more of that Fenty powder this time. Let's just try to smooth over that a bit more. Okay. Uh, it's better, it's better. We're not gonna fuss over it too much because then we'd be here for a long time. So let's jump on, let's move on. It's not the end of the world. Got a little patchiness, but again, it's a first impressions. It's all gonna be okay. Just don't do what I just did. <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to the highlighter. This is the shade Solstice and same thing, I'm gonna pre-warm it up. Ooh, that's got a lot of gold in it. Wow, okay. Kinda wanna take my fingertip, tap it on the very tip of my nose. Okay, that's pretty. That's really pretty, okay. Definitely has a gold, a golden shift to it. And I'm gonna go back to my N17, the same one that I used for the cream blush. And we're gonna just lightly tap on some glow at the very top of my cheekbone, look at that. And then let's say a prayer, we're gonna layer it on top of this side that we've had some struggles with. 
why not bring it out more with the highlighter, right? No, I'm just kidding. It's okay. You know, makeup is fun. You need to exper experiment with makeup. A, a lot of the times when I'm testing out new products and I'm seeing what works well in which order and all those things, it's, it's trial and error. Like there's a lot of trial and error with makeup and you know, it just is what it is. So makeup is fun. It washes off. If you make a mistake, it's not, it's okay. It's no big deal. So now that we have that on, Scorch is on, we have the blush on, we've done all those things. We've done concealer. Before we do lip, I wanna just knock out a pretty eye makeup look with the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette. So I'm not gonna make this kinda of like, I'm not gonna make this too long because I wanna just breeze through the rest of this eye makeup look and just get like a really pretty look going on. And, uh, and then we'll do the lip. So let me grab a clean, N13 brush is my brush with BK Beauty. It's my blending brush. I want to start with, probably no surprise here, I'm going to start with a bit of compassion. And we're going to blend this into the crease. This is going to be our starter shade, our like transitional shade. Just to warm up that crease. This is a very warm tone brown. Wow. Formula is nice. Hmm. Formula is really pretty. Okay. And we're going soft. Going soft spring. Not too heavy. I do wish I would have set my my powder foundation at least once or twice with the spray before I went with the cre went in with the cream products. I'm just kind of thinking that in my head right now, so I'm just kind of throwing that out there in case, you know, you are going to do these products or use these products in this order. I would definitely recommend setting that whole mineral pressed powder base first with that spray and then laying that fully dry down and then going in with the cream products. Just up being again hindsight, you know, the things you think of afterwards just speaking them out loud. So I would have done the base a bit different, but again, first impressions, that's pretty. Now I'm gonna dip into, ooh, Miyamo. This is really pretty. This is such a, a springtime shade. For this, I'm gonna actually tap all over the eyelid and then start to blend it into the crease. Very pretty. Let's build it up a bit. Now the thing about this N13 brush is it actually has very long fibers on it. So they lay flat, they lay flat and smooth. So you can use this as a patting packer brush as well, not just a blending brush because the way the bristles are, the hair is cut, they're longer. So it's a long cut. So you can lay down a product with ease because of the way it's a longer fiber brush. So if you see me kind of going like this with it, it's because of the way it has like a nice smooth, um, smooth base to it because the bristles are so long. Anyway, pat it on, kind of get this softly applied all over the eyelid and then gently blow it out and blend it out up into the crease. I really love that shade. That's so pretty. The formula is really amazing too. Like I have had no fallout with this formula at all. That is always such a huge plus, especially because I have my full base on right now. Like my full base is completely on. So it's always a gamble doing your eyeshadow if you're not, you know, super familiar with the formula that you're putting on. It's always a little bit of a gamble. Really pretty. It's gonna check for evenness. Okay. Now I do want to quickly just switch to my N12 brush. I'm gonna dip back into Compassion. I'm gonna run this on the bottom lash line, just like I normally would. And 
and then following it with Miyamo right on the bottom lash line as well. Mm -hmm. Very, very pretty. Now, one of the shades I have played with already and I'm loving is this shade True Self. It's like a soft mid-tone brown and I want to use this to really, really softly shade my top lash line. Like very, very soft definition is what I'm going for with this. It's like a hint. A bit more on the bottom, just on the outer corner. This palette is beautiful. Wow. Everything I've tried from Dominique Cosmetics, I've been really impressed with. And I'm so grateful. They sent me this palette, so shout out to Dominique Cosmetics for sending me this palette. It's really, really beautiful. Just running that back and forth. Gorgeous. Now for the fun part. I have also tried this, uh, this next shade. This is the shade Pretty Kind. I'm gonna just apply a little bit of this with my fingertip. It's a gorgeous rose type shade. And we're just gonna pop a bit onto the center of the lid. One of my favorite ways to wear eyeshadows is just a soft spotlight of shimmer in a lighter tone in the center. It's just so pretty. It gives such a beautiful open-eyed effect and it's so easy to do. So just tapping this on with my finger. Okay, love. Love. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna stop there. We're not gonna go too overboard with this eye makeup look. I am going to apply some mascara though because I, you know, it's not gonna be complete without mascara. Before I do, I should say first, I am going to tight line just a bit. And let's just use, where is my Gerlactic? Oh wait, no. Where's my Gerlactic? That's not, that's not it. Hold on. Here she is. Okay, my Girlactic Gel Liner. It's in the shade Pure Brown. So we're gonna use this to just tight line the inside for a little bit more definition. So hold please. Just like that. Even that gets me sometimes. <laughs> uh, for mascara, we're gonna go drugstore. A drugstore favorite. It's a Maybelline Sky High mascara. And this one just never disappoints. We get a nice coat of mascara on. Wow, talk about impact. Okay. 
Okay. Mascara is looking good. I don't have a lip liner from Jane Iredell. So I think what we're gonna do is pop a lipstick on and I might go over top with just a different lip liner formula. But let me first show you the shades that I have from Jane Iredell in the lipsticks. I have the shade Bordeaux. Ooh, wow, that's gonna be pretty. Uh, I'm out of clean room on my hand. <laughs> so this is Bordeaux. Beautiful wine, hence the name, shade. That is beautiful. I don't know if I'm gonna go for that for a springtime look. Then we have Rosebud. Rosebud, wow. Oof. Okay, that might go in my, my makeup kit. That definitely might go in my pro kit because that's like a perfect, very, very um, flattering shade. Last but not least, and I'm leaning towards this one. You probably won't be surprised. It's the shade Bellini. So Bellini is gonna be the lightest one out of the three. And for this spring makeup look, I wanna go for a more lighter, softer lip. So I'm gonna take Bellini. That's really pretty. Definitely my kind of shade. Very creamy, kind of on the thicker side. has no fragrance, which if I'm being really honest with you all, I don't like my lipsticks to not have fragrance because I can just kind of, they smell kind of like, like a factory. To me, totally a personal preference here. But I like my lipsticks to smell like a hint of vanilla or a hint of like a fruit. Just, just me, that's just me. So I wish I had some kind of fragrance just to kind of, I don't know. Take away that chemically, not chemically, but like there's like a, it, just, it tastes, it smells like a factory, basically. <laughs> um, let's see, let's do some lip liner. Let's add some definition to this lip. I'm gonna use my LYS lip liner in the shade Soulful and just run a little bit of this on. So not too much. Yeah, this was missing a lip liner. Pretty. And then we have one last thing to do. And that is finish with that setting spray and then we're done. Hmm. That's a good combo. I love the LYS lip liners. If you haven't tried these, these are really nice. So let me put this lipstick away. Let's shake up this setting spray. I'm definitely getting like a nice soft spring vibe from this makeup look. Really happy with the way it came out. You know, the only hiccup that we had, so to speak, throughout this whole video of, of trying a ton of new products that I'm not familiar with was that patchiness that went on here. But, you know, it's not the worst thing. It's, uh, it's not, you know, it's not so terrible that I'd have to remove my makeup is my point. And, um, you know, now we know, right? Now we know together not to make that same mistake that I made. So let's set this makeup with the Palmist. I, I don't know why this name is tripping me up. The Palmist Setting Hydration spray, it's a setting spray. And let me test out the sprayer really quick first. There we go. Whew. Mm, okay, that smells lovely. Whew, that was uh, very wet. <laughs> We're gonna let this dry down. Let's speed this up. That was a lot more intense than I was expecting. Tap on a little bit more of this powder. Don't mind the a massive amounts of construction work being done in my neighborhood. But that's the finished look. I think this is really pretty. This was a lot of fun. I love the way my skin feels. I really honestly can't wait to keep testing these products out separately together, all those things. But if you have any thoughts on any of these Jane Iredell products that I tried on today's video, leave them in the comments below. 
Let me know if you have any favorites from the brand. I would love to hear your thoughts or if you tried the mineral foundation, if you've loved it, if you have um, if you have sensitive skin and it's worked for you, I would just love to hear any of your thoughts on these products. I am very pleasant, pleasantly surprised with how the makeup look came out. I think that everything was pretty much a hit, to be honest. This was very unexpected. I, I love the way my skin feels. I think it looks really beautiful. It looks really fresh and glowy. That setting spray was a lot more intense than I remembered it being, to be quite honest. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. Let me know if you've tried any of these products from Jane Iredell, if you have any experience with them. Um, if you have favorites from the brand, leave them in the comments below. I would love to have like an open conversation about it. This was a lot of new products all in one video, so I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Um, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this Nikki and Cut. Sorry for all the noise in the background. The neighborhood is going wild right now. <laughs> but I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, and if you like Nikki and Cut, don't forget, there's tons more here. I'll see you in the next one.